Hello to all again. Welcome back to Ren My Shed episode 2 for this weekend. I've had a couple of requests for information where it appears I've been a little bit skimpy. So later on in this episode we'll try and explain a few things. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer. Um, big score for this weekend. Beautiful German made spindle. A really nice electric motor. Uh, I couldn't get the electric box out of the frame of the uh, belt scribing machine. It appears to be a push it in and the snaps in place one way do daddy so I'll have to make up my own IP56 enclosure. Uh, happy with what I've got. I'll have to make up that but the drive belt to get to Cincinnati uh, pulley rather Cincinnati running at the right speed. I do have another pulley on a high speed attachment and it might be swap around. The pulley appears to be the same taper as the Cincinnati grinding mill hubs so I may have to make up some hubs in the future edition but all in all, we'll see how we go. One big question I keep getting is how does radial relief and axial relief work? And this is an old tap grinding attachment that I bought um, many, many years ago. It's probably older than me. It's reasonably simple when you look at it, but if you don't look at it from close up, you'll miss out on the information. So I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer later on. I'll take the cam plate off, show the set mechanism. Uh, I don't know whether I can get the camera set up from here, but maybe over my shoulder might be a little bit better to get you close enough. It's extremely well made. The materials they made these jigs and pictures out of 50 or 60 years ago or more is extremely good. It's still going now, which is just a testimony to how bloody well, well made it is. And I also had an inquiry on how to use a cam plate on a tuna cutter grinder workhead to get axial relief. It is unbelievably simple uh, unless you haven't seen it done. So I'll bring the camera in close on that one and maybe over the shoulder for this, I don't know. But it's fairly easy to do. Uh, there's a few other people who've done this on videos up on the internet. And also, hopefully I'll remember to put a link down in the comments to a Hemingway kit from England. Kurt does a good job of drawings and materials. And I've had a lot of requests, oh, can't you give us some drawings for a simple four-facet drill grinder? And the story is, no, I'm poor on time. You've got more time than me, so look the bloody things up yourself. Having said that, the kit that Kurt puts out is, I think, reasonably well-priced, and I'll come back later on with that price. Uh, it is a full set of drawings, the materials. It is designed to have the drill uh, up like that, pointing down because the table on the warden uh, can be set to any angle. It uses the upcoming edge of the grinding wheel to grind onto the edge of the drill. It has a very good drill holding mechanism. It also has an adaptable backstop for the drill. It is adjustable for length on the drill. I think out of all the kits available is probably the cheapest and the most adaptable, but easiest to use. Uh, so I'll put a link up, you can decide later on, but that'll come in towards the end of the video. So now to some nitty gritty. Uh, I'll bring it in close and first of all we'll look at axial relief and then secondly we'll look at the drill and the tap grinding attachment. If I think it's going to come good enough I'll leave you coming in from this direction. At least then I'm getting between the fill light and what's happening on camera. So I'll zoom in shortly and we'll see what's happening. Okay, back again guys, we'll start off with the tap grinding attachment, very very well made, bloody ancient. Okay, it has a set of V-box on the back here, and once this tap and once this set, so demonstration tap, nice and greasy, and everything. Undo the set screw on the top, which allows a V-jaw the slide inside the housing and there's a centre that you put the tap up against. So push this centre in. The tap is now captured between centres. And if I turn this over to where you can see it, that is the sliding V jaw. And the V part of the jaw engages with the square of the tap. 
Then you whoop, lock up a screw that says tap. So the tap is now captured between centres and set to the head. Now to set the head to the cam. Under the lock, <laughs> untighten the locking screw that says set. Bring the cam up towards the top of the cam and align the start and finish of the flute vertical to the table. Same as all uh, axial and radial relief attachments, the setting is usually the same. So now we have the tap set to the head, the head set to the cam. You then offer this up to the tool and cutter grinder with the grinding wheel coming in on the chamfer at the front of the tap. And as you turn the attachment, I'll show you some more of the mechanism up close. The whole body of the grinder tilts back from the grinding wheel to give you relief behind the cutting edge. Okay, working parts of it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'll just go and get all the up so we can undo that one. Just a little bit there. That's better. Okay. Take off the retaining nut and washer and remove the key handle. Key handle. On the edge, you can see the cam which is rotated by the hand wheel, operates on a little roller mechanism down the bottom, which works this lever. This lever in turn turns this bell crank, which rotates this shaft. Now, the cam comes off there and is reversible for left hand taps. So it's easy peasy. And I have a set of cams in the box for three, four, six and eight flute taps, I think. So it's reversible and for those number of taps. So it's quite a simple mechanism. Tap is captured by the V-jaw. It is timed to the cam. The cam has to have the right orientation, left hand or right hand, and the right number of lobes on the cam to suit the number of uh, flutes on the tap. Ah, look at that. We can turn it. So you should now be able to see the cam mechanism working on the back there which in turn rotates this shaft. So, so far, reasonably simple piece of kit. Put the handle back on. Okay. Also over the back is a spring that is way too long for the job it's supposed to do but it's supposed to leave a little bit of tension on the body so it goes back to rest. I think it'll go back to rest by itself anyway. Now originally when I bought this attachment it didn't have a base and there's a spigot sticking down from the main housing and I thought this was a bit of negligence on behalf of the vendor not sending me the whole attachment so I made up this nice base that clamps down on the tool and cutter grinder table. And I get the instructions a fair bit later, about a year later, and it says there is no base, the spigot goes in the T-slot of the tool and cutter grinder. Now well, that's good, it would work, provided you've got a pretty big T-slot. So I'd say that the attachment is built around Cincinnati number two or a tool and cutter grinder of similar size. Now, once again, rotating the handle. I'll turn it up a little bit. Rotating the handle, tilts the whole mechanism back, which retracts the tap back from the grinding wheel and allows it to go in for the next flute. Now, when the shaft rotates, there's a V, I don't know if you can see it, inside the shaft here. 
in there. And that V pushes on a rod that goes through the main housing and pushes onto the back of this nut. And this is your adjustment for the different size taps. Now, it says here it goes quarter up to one inch, but I think you could grind any tap that would fit between centres. And from memory, I've measured three and a half inches by ten and a half inch long could be accommodated, which is a pretty big range of bloody taps. And right down to the smallest tap with the centre of both ends, and you might even go a little bit smaller, provided there's a centre in the back end, and if you made up a female centre with a centre drill for that end. So it would do very, very small work. Okay, so this shaft rotates, pushes against the rod through the middle here. As this end is fixed, it causes this end to lift up and pivot on this pivot pin, and it pivots away from the grinding wheel. So it pivots up like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it only has to go 15th hour or thereabouts to get the effect that you want. Yeah, this clamps the main body so you can slide the body backwards and forwards to give you better adjustment on where the uh, centre is. Obviously for a longer tap you'd have to pull the body through. Okay. Put the operator side around to you. This is the main adjustment for the size of the tap and as you wind it in and close it up that pushes against the push rod and there's less dead movement. All of the can movement when a screw rod in is used to tilt the whole mechanism back. Absolutely brilliant piece of gear. I don't know who designed it. The factory, it's not named in any way at all. Uh, the cams are extremely hard material. Geez, uh, I'm pretty sure it's American by its style. Uh, very good working piece of equipment. So that's a radial relief grinding attachment. Um, you will be able to do something similar at home on working on a design for an eccentric unit, not cam operated, but eccentric operated for grinding taps at higher speed and taking bigger cuts, but that's something that's off into my future. Okay, that's one out of the way. That's for a customer request or a viewer request. This is the Clarkson or one of the Clarkson workheads for the tool and cutter grinder. And these plates were originally slotted out to go on the base so I can use the base at angles other than dropping it into the table slot. Makes it a little bit more universal in inverted commas. Okay, standard Clarkson workhead. Why it's got metric bushes in it, I don't know. One of the later model workheads, I suppose. Uh, 25 millimeter. This is an ER32 collet chuck with a 25 millimeter shaft. If you're going to build a home-built till and cut grinder, I would suggest this would be the most universal item. The basic collet chuck cost me about seventy dollars or something like that, which is very very cheap. I got an ER11 collet holder, which will go up to 11 millimeter, and about ten collets for I think fifty or sixty dollars. And that's what I use for very small drills for um, four facet and split point grinding. Okay, the big question that came in over the internet, and it's quite a viable question, how does the cam action work on the tool and cutter grinder? Okay, all you need for cam action or axial relief, as it's called, is a bit of movement in the head, a cam, and a cam follower. And the cam can be adjusted for the uh, position where you want it to effectively run on the head of the screw and the rate of cam or the angle of the cam is just altered by turning the bloody cam and locking it up. Dead simple. A better design than mine would have a little bit of a spring holding it down at the front here. Two washers, just a very soft spring to hold it down so that the uh, screw head actually climbs the cam. And a better design than mine, instead of having a screw head there, it would be a very small ball bearing with a socketed cap screw in the end. And as it goes up, the ball bearing would ride that cam a hell of a lot easier. What have I got here? Just to get a little bit of height. Okay. So we'll bring that up to touch. 
you can see that the screw head touches the cam plate and as I rotate it, it forces the work head back. That's pulling the tool away from the grinding wheel. The grinding wheel is here, the tool right here, the tool is here. As you pull it away, it will grind the tool less and you want that to happen as you're coming towards the cutting edge. That way there will be less clearance at the cutting edge. As you can imagine, as the tool is withdrawn from the grinding wheel, it grinds less. As the tool is impringed into the grinding wheel, it grinds more. So we go through this again. The screw head touches the cam plate and as you rotate the shaft of the tool and cutter grinder, it rides up in the cam, gets more uh, distance back from the grinding wheel and drops off into the next flute. Now, this is quite obviously for a single flute tool. If you've got a two flute tool like a drill, and yes you can grind drills with these, you would have two screws from a three flute, you would have it reversed with three screws, four flute, four, so you could have three and six here, one, two and four here, and just take the screws out and fit them in to the other position. Not a lot of genius involved whatsoever. Uh, just following on from commercial designs, the way they've done it, although their cam uh, might have a curved profile instead of pro straight profile. If you get onto YouTube, there's a fellow called George Hegg, who has done two very good videos on using a Clarkson drill grinding attachment. And if you have a look at the attachment, not what's happening in the grinding video, you'll see that there is an angle plate for a cam on the Clarkson. And it's actually marked off in degrees and you can change the angle of the plate and then lock it up with the adjusting screw. So look at those two videos and look at them at least twice and you'll pick up a hell of a lot of good information on how to use their attachment but also how to build your own. Okay, I hope there's been a little bit of information here to uh, wet your whistle and keep you interested in the channel. Sorry I've been so long in making videos but I find Vera's company a damn sight interesting <laughs> than you people. Can't imagine that. Okay, bye for now. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And uh, these two were answering uh, viewers' questions. I can answer those that I can that I'm set up for, but I can't spend the time to do a full setup just to answer a question. And there's the magnetic indicator base I was looking for earlier. Amazing how you can lose your memory. Okay, guys, see you next weekend with a bit of luck.